Today I want to take you behind the scenes into my music studio, show you all the equipment I work with, and also give you my advice on stuff that I think new producers need, or also things that you might not need, but um, let me show you around. So this over here is my studio. Let me show you a bit around. Okay, so I guess two things. Forgive me if the lighting in this video is pretty terrible. I have this crazy window behind me and it lets in a lot of light, which is good, but it's not that good when I'm trying to film. So I usually can only film from a specific spot in my video, but now that I'm moving the camera around and showing you guys, I kind of have to improvise a little bit. Um, but I want to show you guys a few things on my desk, talk about the things that I think are kind of necessary for any music producer to have. I want to give you guys my, kind of my thoughts on how I have my studio set up like this. And uh, yeah, just kind of let you guys know the things that maybe I would recommend or the things that I wouldn't recommend to you guys. Okay, so first I want to talk about the desk, sort of like the, I guess, main part of the studio, definitely where I spend most of my time. Um, I want to show you guys, I guess, everything that's on the desk and uh, tell you how I put it all together. Um, I don't know if you can see here. So my thoughts on this desk, because I definitely spend a lot of time working here. I want to give you guys my opinion. Um, do I love this desk? I wouldn't say that I absolutely love it, but just because it's kind of big, it's kind of bulky. Um, I feel like a lot of people have kind of moved on from the wood style desk. I see a lot of nicer desks in either all white or all black. The wood is, it's nice, whatever. I don't use a lot of the storage compartments though, so I feel like it's a kind of a lot of wasted space. And like I said, it's kind of big, it's kind of clunky, um, but I've tried a few different other desks throughout the years. And the one thing I've realized is that as a music producer, the one thing that you need is space because you're not just putting a, you know, monitor on your desk and calling it that. You're going to have a lot of other equipment. You're going to have speakers. You know, I do everything off a laptop, so I need to have my laptop on here. I have, you know, headphones, audio interfaces. I have MIDI keyboards. Sometimes I have uh, MPCs. So I often have all these other pieces and equipments on my desk, which it makes it nice to have a space this big. Um, I would say that's kind of the best thing about this desk is that I like is just the amount of space that it has. But again, I don't know. I'm not like totally sold on this desk. I might upgrade later on, but it's getting the job done for now. So I can't really complain. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about what's on the desk and give you guys my uh, feedback here. So I use an LG 27 inch monitor. It's okay. It gets the job done. I did recently try and do dual monitors and I actually <laughs> didn't have enough space. Although I was just saying how big this desk is it wasn't big enough for dual monitors. So that's one thing to note. It's uh, if you need dual monitors and speakers, you're gonna need a really big desk. I don't do a whole lot off of the laptop here and I will get into that. Mostly everything is just through my external monitor here, even though it's all powered through this laptop, but gets the job done. I do have an external webcam here that I use often for uh, Zoom calls and virtual meetings and stuff like that. And this above here is just a light, bar, a light sensor, whatever they call it. Um, you know, obviously with a huge window here, letting a lot of space and I'm working late hours and stuff. It's nice to have a little bit of extra light here, just something subtle, but actually makes a big difference when you're using it or not. I have just a basic Microsoft surface, uh, keyboard here, wireless mouse, nothing fancy there. Um, but I do want to talk about this a little bit. So this is just off of Amazon. It's basically just two little monitorizers. I like it because I can tuck some stuff in between. Um, for example, I do a lot of stuff with this MIDI keyboard here and I like to, you know, when I'm not using it, tuck it away, gives a little bit more space, get my setup a little bit cleaner. On this side, I've got just a box of random cables and junk that I need, pens and stuff. And then way down there, I have just a basic interface, audio interface. I don't really ever see the need to change that one. Um, but yeah, it gets the job done. And it all is power, basically. Everything is uh, drop down in the back. 
it all just goes basically there's a few cables on that side but i'll just go through the usb port in my laptop here now i'll put the laptop specs in the description but this is a gaming laptop msi pretty decked out gets the job done i'm handling a lot of vsts a lot of plugins at once it gets the job done. To the side of my keyboard here, I have two basically pieces of equipment. I have a complete control S49. This is a MIDI keyboard, so there's no sounds within it. It also be plugged in and then running off of FL Studio, um, any plugins or software within the program. And then underneath here, I've got a Prophet 12 synthesizer. Um, and this one, basically all the sounds are within it, so you can customize it all and then record it like you would a guitar or anything like that. But I do want to give you guys a bit of my thoughts on these two equipment and this guy here, just because you might be wondering which one is best for you. I know these are three things here and these are basically three different priced pieces of equipment. So if I were just looking for equipment, if I were to do things differently in my studio, I wouldn't waste money on hardware synthesizers or big keyboards. Instead, I would stick with just one of these, one of the basic 25 key um, MIDI keyboards. I use this more than I use any of those um, pieces of equipment over there. And honestly, unless you're like a really big gear enthusiast and you know exactly what you're doing with hardware synths, um, I wouldn't spend the money on them. I just feel like you can get so many good plugins for FL Studio, so many good VSTs that you can use in one of these and it gets the job done. And I feel like that stuff, like it looks cool, it's fun toys, but I use this more than any other piece of equipment in here. I also wanna talk about uh, these things on the wall behind me and I had a few of them over behind the uh, desk here. Uh, basically acoustic treatment because I know it's a topic that a lot of producers are kind of questioning myself included for a long time Okay, so let's talk about acoustic treatment here because it's something that I wondered for a long time I know a lot of people kind of wonder if it actually makes a difference when you're recording stuff and if it makes a difference absorbing the sound so just a bit of context and backstory here um, my studio is in a spare bedroom in my house, which I live in a townhouse. It's semi-detached, so I have neighbors on. Um, basically, there's a room beside my music studio room that's ours, and then we have neighbors living on the other side. Now, on this wall here behind me, there's no neighbors. So I remember when you know I was looking at different places um, to move into and to basically set up my permanent studio, I had to take that into account a little bit, you know, the neighbor situation. Um, I don't want to move into a place or start working on music and right away have people knocking on my door telling me to turn down the music. So that is one thing that I personally considered a lot when I was, you know, moving and getting into music full time. Now I do think though that acoustic treatment like this, these are just some panels that I got off Amazon. Um, I do think that they actually do work pretty well. I remember when I first moved into this studio here, there was basically nothing. I had my desk and that was it. I remember you could clap your hands and you would hear basically echoing off the walls. And this is a pretty small room, so you know the sound was echoing off like crazy. And it just it wasn't getting absorbed in anything. It was an empty room. Since I don't have things in here like other chairs or, you know, I remember when I was starting to make music, I had um, uh, my bed in the room, a dresser, a bookshelf, all these other big pieces of furniture that absorb the sound. I didn't have that in this room when I you know, moved here and I still don't really have big pieces of furniture that can absorb the sound. So that's why I think that having a few of these sound panels up on the wall, it does make a difference, but you can't just buy any ones. You don't have to buy like the super, super high end ones, but these ones that I have, I think that they are a couple inches thick I know that a lot of places online sell really, really thin ones that I don't think will make much of a difference. Um, I opted for these ones that are a little bit thicker and I do think that they actually do a pretty good job. When I'm recording myself talking in videos, I don't hear any echo. It does isolate the sound pretty well. Now I also wanna just talk about a few things that I recommend, you know, if you're a producer just starting to make a studio, what do you need? What is essential? What do you don't need? You know, I already talked about the um, equipment that I have, the couple of keyboards that I have, and how personally, I don't think you really need it. You know, I've been selling beats and making beats for over a decade now, and 
kind of whenever I'm making modifications to my studio, I'm basically moving in a way that makes it more simpler. I don't want this big fancy setup that I need to spend, you know, so much time plugging in cables here and there, making tiny adjustments to sounds. I basically just want something that I can plug into my laptop and make beats with. And that's why I'm constantly thinking of ways that like, basically how can I make my setup even more minimal? It's funny, it's like I started with a minimal setup making beats and then, you know, as my business grew, as I was able to invest my money from music back into my, you know, equipment, I got more pieces of equipment, built out this little studio here, and now I just kind of think the opposite. I'm like, okay, how can I basically make this even more minimal so the focus can just be about my music and not about the equipment that I'm using. If I were to recommend pieces of equipment to any producer out there, I find that in the beginning when you're working on music, you don't need all the crazy big specs. I, this is about my, I think, fourth or fifth laptop since I started making music. I started small, got the job done. A few years later, I was able to invest it into a, a different laptop or a different piece of equipment and go from there. And I think that speakers are nice to have, headphones are nice to have, but again, work with what you have at the moment. There's a lot of tools digitally that you can use to get good mixes, good sounds, without all the equipment in the world at first. It's basically, I would say, when you can reinvest back into your music, get things like speakers, audio interfaces, better headphones, a couple of you know pieces of acoustic treatment, but you don't need it to begin. And I didn't wanna make this video you know, to show off or break to everyone. Uh, I just really love taking you guys behind the scenes like this and showing you my, <laughs> my specific pieces of equipment here and my honest thoughts on them. You know, what do you need if you're just starting making music online? So if you guys have any questions in this video, uh, about the equipment I use or if you need any clarification on anything or just looking for advice Leave a comment below. I love to engage in the discussion with you guys um, And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching hit that subscribe button. We will see you in the next video